Oh, hello, friends. We've got something new. Well, they're not new. Eric uses them in his podcast all the time, but new to us on this channel, I'm using a fancy microphone and I'm loving every second of it. Let me just tell you, right, Scrimpy? Yep. I feel like a 1940s ba doo ba da ba doo ba da ba doo. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Okay, well, today we're so excited because we're trying something new. You want to tell people what we're trying, Scrippy? We're going to try a little couples chat podcast thing where we... What? Sorry, I was just like doing like a face, like a reaction <laughs> face. <laughs> where, yeah, we just sit and talk about whatever kind of comes up. We have an idea for this one, but if you all like it, then we might do it again. So we're not totally sold on this idea, but we thought we would film a YouTube video for our channel in the same format we're thinking of doing a podcast in more seriously, like more long form content, just like a little 20 minute-ish teaser for you guys. See if you like it, see if we like it most yeah. importantly. I just think it'd be fun to like chat together. The premise of it really is that Eric and I are the most different people you could probably be while still being able to fall in love. <laughs> Oh, not yeah. hate each other. Yeah. We are so different, like basically complete opposites. And we have a lot of lively debates and lots of lively discussions. And we thought it would just be fun to kind of sit casually on the couch and chit chat about random crap. So it's true. that's what we're going to do to kind of test this idea. Maybe nothing will come of it and you'll never see a video like this ever again. Maybe we're going to launch a podcast because, you know, the world needs another podcast. That's for sure. Yeah. Who knows? So let us know down below if you like this idea or if you hate it and you're like, don't do it. Don't waste your time. I'm, I might not. I might not. Anyway, <laughs> I could about? do this for two hours long because I am obsessed with this microphone. <laughs> I play with these microphones in Eric's office all the time. He's been podcasting for how long, Scrooby? About eight years. Yeah. And go check out his podcast, Ever Renewed. It's very successful. It doesn't need my small baby channel to plug it. But um, so he always has these in his room somewhere. And I constantly talk into them. I always play with them. But it's like, this is my first time using it for real. And I just want to like, oh, I just want to manhandle it, you know? I love it. You can so, tell that I'm I feel so more fancy. acclimated to using a microphone. Oh, he's such a cool guy. So today we're going to be talking about, because we're so different, the things that we have in common, specifically that we didn't get into before we knew each other. So yeah. stuff I got Eric into, stuff he got me into. Scrimby, you wanna tell the folks? Um, one of the things. One of the things. We really didn't talk about this much, so we're just gonna kinda of be going off the cuff. One of the things you got me into? Having a conversation together, yeah. Um, okay, I, I think the, the first thing that you got me into that I was not at all into before and kind of actively antagonistic towards was musical theater. Oh yeah, Eric um, used to be a pretentious I, I was super theater into theater. Major. I went to school for theater, loved acting, uh, loved directing, serious thought that art. musicals were the biggest piece of fluff <laughs> and like real art happened with plays and stuff like that. And when we got together, started to listen to musicals and be what more exposed to musicals. That? I think a big part of it was just the timing of like the type of shows that were coming out around the time that you were trying to get me to check out musicals. Like, like what? Like Hamilton was a big one. It was in the zeitgeist. And so it was easy for that to be kind of a gateway of like, oh, okay, I really enjoy this. Maybe and I think like there might be something more here. Mm -hmm. And I think just my personality type, like once I'm into something, like Easy I go down the rabbit hole. Deep. That's called ADHD. Um, folks. <laughs> <laughs> and so, so once I got into musical theater, then I dove really deep into like yeah. listening to podcasts, checking out like these cult hit shows that people didn't know about, like Heather's and stuff like that. I think that kind of had a lot to do with it. And then also just virtue of your family, it's impossible to yeah, you can't, not you listen to You still haven't theater. watched The Sound of Music. It's movie true. with Julie Andrews. Till the day That's I die. That's a crime. That's a crime in the Hopkins family. Well, lock me up. You have seen the stage production of Sound of Music yeah. probably like seven times at this point. Yeah, I've seen it quite <laughs> so a few times. Much. With something like musical theater, I think the perception for a lot of people is they see stuff like The Music Man or mm -hmm. even Which some, I love. some of the more like dramatic stuff like Les Mis, but the scope is just so big. Yeah. And you assume that it's all like that. It's it's like if the first time you experience food, like the first three things you're fed are like ice cream. And it's like, okay, I, I see what this is, <laughs> but I'm going to get sick of it very quickly. So I'm not going to go any further. you get sick of ice cream very quick? Yeah. If that's the only thing you're allowed to eat. I would get sick of broccoli real quick. I wouldn't get sick of ice cream real quick. Anyway. Uh, <laughs> so once I started to see that there was more substantial stuff out there in the musical mm -hmm. theater sphere that like appealed to my sensibilities, like fun home, come from away, last five years, 
Uh, yeah, that Baby's really, town. really. And I think we Something might rotten. we might get some gruff if he watches it from our friend Jeff because I feel like he also will claim a bit of ownership of yeah, my I'd journey into musical credit. theater, like a third um, credit. Maybe a <laughs> so I would say that's that's one of the bigger things that mm -hmm. I had no interest in that you got me into, and now you're super into it. Yeah, hardcore. So what's another thing that well, I got you into? Why don't we alternate? Back oh, now? do you want me to do me now? Yeah. Okay. What's one thing you got me into? I feel like I have a sneeze. Hold on. Hold. 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 hold, hold. Bless. I think your microphones are dusty. I think I've got dust particles coming in my nostrils. Okay, something you got me into. Oh, board games, 100% board games. I had played like the game of life, Monopoly. Sorry, my brother was so into Sorry <laughs> as a kid. I played Sorry so freaking much. Hungry Hungry Hippos, um, lots of just normal kid Hasbro games. Yeah. But I didn't even know what like specialty board games were. I remember actually the first time I got into a board game was we went to stay with Philip and Kelly. Yep, our friends down in Texas. Who we've gone and stayed with. We used to go like every year. Yeah. For we used to go for Marvel movies, which that's another thing you've gotten me into. We can talk about that. And I had played a couple of specialty board games, maybe before this, but the first one I remember vividly playing and really liking was a game called Kill Dr. Lucky. Yep, it's like reverse clue where you're trying to kill the person. And it was the first time I was like, oh, I get it. Yeah. Before we had maybe played a few games that went completely over my head, like even by the end of the game, I did not know what was happening. Like I did not catch on. I thought it was so boring. It took so long. Yeah. So until Kill Dr. Lucky, I was like, oh, I could get into this. And then slowly we just started accumulating board games, playing more board games together. Wow. We have way too many board games now. We should do a our board game collection. Uh, that would be way <laughs> yeah, too like long. Three hour video. long video. Yeah. Yeah. We started getting all of our friends into board games and having like regular board game nights. That was like 10 years ago. Well, not 10 years ago, but maybe like seven years yeah. ago. And now we have board game night at our house, if not once a month, then pretty frequently. Pretty frequently. Yeah. And we play board games all the time. Like that's one of our hobbies, I would say, like very typical pastime for us. Yeah. So any who's also, I certainly would never have played a specialty board game on my own without you. So yeah. that's something I really, really love and enjoy. And it's a huge part of our life that you got me into. Yeah. Um, another big thing, once again, that I was, I think that's the big difference is like the stuff that I got in, you into mm -hmm. just wasn't on your radar or you weren't like, yeah, I didn't actively, of it. did I actively hate anything? that I now am into. I feel like the only thing I actively hate, and I hate's even too strong of a word, but the only thing I actively have no, zero interest in that you do are video games and wrestling. Yeah. I can't think of anything that I like thought was reprehensible that you've changed my mind on that I actively hated. But with you, are you gonna talk about Taylor Swift next? Cause you yeah. actively did not like Taylor Swift. And now I turned Eric into a Swifty baby. Okay, let's pump the brakes a little bit. It's a Swifty, he's a Swifty. On, bo on both counts. I wasn't You're like- You're like a, a baby Swifty. You're like a beginner Swifty. I wasn't like, baby. like, I was not like the a toxic, baby. like- A little baby. <laughs> I'm worried that people are gonna think that I was like crap talking Taylor no, Swift. No, 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 no. You she just was a bad didn't person. like her music and you thought yeah. she was totally overrated. Cause um, he didn't get it. He didn't get it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, okay, here's the thing. Also. And you're going to say she hadn't written folklore yet. And that's when you figured out she was a true artist and all her stuff before that is crap. And that's not true. <laughs> I guess I don't even need to be here at this point. <laughs> uh, somebody's going to talk for me. So oh, we should not start a podcast. <laughs> We're going to get divorced. <laughs> Um, just so kidding, no, like, just kidding. just kidding, right, Scrooby? Yes, just kidding. Yeah. I'd only been exposed to like the hits of Speak Now, Fearless, Red, 1989, mm -hmm. and even I would say Reputation even was prior to it, it was like 2020 when I started Reputation doing Taylor is basically a, chance. a perfect album. Uh, could not disagree more. Like, I'd only heard the hits, and so as a guy in my like mid twenties hearing love story or shake 22 off. shake it off. You couldn't really relate. Uh, yeah. It, it's understandable. It was just like this, it, it's pop music. It's mm -hmm. fine. I've never been a big like fan of pop music once I hit college. And so yeah, when folklore came out and you were like, let's listen to this. I was like, oh, this is actually very, very good. And then I started listening to some of the stuff that wasn't as heavily featured, like off a of reputation, like hearing Archer, which what didn't get the same kind of play. What? on lover lover whatever 
And I can go back and listen to stuff like Love Story and appreciate it for what it is. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, Folklore is obviously my number one album. Evermore is second. And then everything else I kind of parse through. But like when the re-release of Red came out, listened to it, enjoyed it. I appreciate Taylor Swift. I like a couple of her albums. But before, like without you, I never would have listened to Folklore. Right. Like I wouldn't right. have engaged with it. What's um, your favorite Taylor Swift song? Exile. Yeah, he loves Exile. Easy. What's your second favorite Taylor Swift song? Oh, what's the Last Great American Dynasty? <gasps> I love that song. That's probably in my top five. Um, what's your third favorite Taylor Swift song? <laughs> um, are you just going to try to get me no, to a point I, where I, I can't just, name I, another one? I like, just, I want to know like a few that you like. Champagne Problems. Oh, good one. That's what's good. another one of your favorite Taylor Swift songs? There are other ones that I you like. You can't name another one? All I Too I, Well, 10 Minute Version. I can name other ones. Listen, All, all Too Well, well I Have Complicated version. Feelings About. Not, when, we can't get into that. We when that song dropped, I thought Jake Gyllenhaal had done some <laughs> heinous stuff because all I saw on the internet was like people calling out Jake okay, Gyllenhaal. Okay, okay, okay. And then we I found out it was just a Taylor Swift song. It was like, oh we my God. cannot get your opinion about this out there in the world. I'm so sorry, but moving right you along. You want to give my thoughts on John Mayer? <laughs> oh my gosh, he's so bad, you guys. He's so bad. Okay, so I got you into Taylor Swift. You went and watched the concert with me. Yeah. There's a vlog about that, you guys. I'll link it up here, maybe if I remember. Who knows? So. Another thing that I got you into? Yeah, what's another thing? <laughs> you tell me. Oh, that you got me into? Yeah. Oh, well, I said it earlier, Marvel and just like general like nerd stuff. Like couldn't care less about any of the Marvel movies before we dated. Didn't care about any like any franchise beyond Harry Potter I really didn't care about. I feel like there's a franchise all. you could speak to that like you got super into what do you thanks mean? to me. Jurassic Park? Yeah. Yeah, that's true. I got into that because of you. I didn't like Jurassic Park before that. I showed you the first three movies in preparation for seeing Jurassic World. and you, That's right. And I slipped out. You, well, I didn't even watch Jurassic Park 3 with you because I hate that movie so much. You're like, no, I'm going to watch it. it. <laughs> I freaking love it all. I just love that franchise. Like there's just something. It's like the theme park mixed with the dinosaurs. I loved dinosaurs as a kid. Like Land Before Time loved Land Before Time, was obsessed. Love that too. So I just have always kind of had like a thing for dinosaurs. And I, my only memory about Jurassic Park before we got together and we watched them as an adult was when it first, when Jurassic Park 2 first came out, I think Jurassic Park 2, maybe even 3, I'm not sure. My Uncle Eric and Aunt Lurie had just gotten a huge plasma TV. It was like ones that were as thick yeah. as like- They sat I, like four feet out away from the yeah, wall. Yeah, so giant. No, it was one that was like freestanding. Like it had a base. Mm -hmm. It took up like half of a wall and it was huge. Yeah. And they had a movie night where all the family came over and we all sat in their big living room with that giant plasma TV and watched whatever Jurassic Park movie it was. And I just remember being terrified, <laughs> like hiding under the blanket. I think it was probably 10, like yeah. eight or 10, hiding under the blanket, just so horrified by the whole experience. And I never watched it again until we watched it you're still terrified and i fell bit. in love and it terrifies me still because i'm scared of literally everything you want to tell them about when we saw jurassic world was afterwards? that jurassic world or was it jurassic world 2 no it was jurassic world are you sure 100 percent. okay well when we saw jurassic world i guess we had watched the first three in preparation yep. for that and i fell in love with the franchise oh i just love it so much we saw Jurassic World, which is my favorite movie in the franchise. Mm, no, Jurassic Park is, but then Jurassic World is my second favorite. Anywho, so we saw it in Bricktown. And there was a film Oklahoma festival City. going on. There was a film festival going on, so there was no parking. We were late for the movie. There was no place to park. We probably drove around for 30 minutes trying to find a parking spot. And when I say drive around, just for reference, Bricktown in Oklahoma reference? City. Reference? You said reference. I did. I <laughs> for reference with an R. Bricktown in Oklahoma City is like little pockets of a movie theater, a restaurant, another restaurant, a little canal, Bass Pro Shop. Like there are multiple places to park throughout this little hub that is Bricktown and there were no parking yeah. spots, zero. So we had to park under the underpass of the highway past the Bass Pro parking lot in a gravel like ditch basically is where we parked. And then we had to walk maybe a mile to the it was a very long movie walk. theater. It, it probably took 20 minutes for us to walk from where we parked to the movie theater, okay? We saw the movie, it was amazing, it was awesome, it was horrifying and terrifying. We walk out of the movie theater. It is 11 o'clock maybe? Yeah. And it is torrentially 
downpouring. Yeah. Like the sideways worst rain. rain. The sky is yellow and dark and moody and eerie. Big, Wind thick, fat whipping raindrops. everywhere. Yeah. Just you can't see more than like three feet in front of you. Horrifying. And we're like, what the frick do we do? It's eleven o'clock at night. We can't go back into the movie theater because it's literally locked shut. Like they're closing it. Everything around was closed. There was nothing to do other than to like suck it up and Run. go to our car. So we ran to our freaking car in the pouring down torrential rain. I took my shoes off. I was wearing sandals. They were flying off my feet because my feet were soaking wet. And the entire freaking time we ran, I felt like a dinosaur was chasing, chasing us. You. Yeah. It was the most surreal feeling ever. I felt like I had sat in this movie theater, come out of the movie theater and entered Jurassic, Jurassic World. Park. Like... Yeah. I was there. We were in imminent danger from a dinosaur that was about to eat us running behind us. And we had to run for our life. It was yeah. surreal. Wow. That was one of the most vivid memories of my entire life. <laughs> oh, so funny. Yeah. Anyway, so yeah, I feel like all of the nerd things you really got me into. Even just like, I never would have cared to watch like even like Star Trek or... yeah. And I don't love Star Trek, but I thoroughly enjoyed it. You Even were... like DC films. Like I really, really liked the DC Batman and DC Superman, whatever. Never would have watched those ever without you. Well, I remember when we went and saw one of the new Star Trek remakes with Chris Pine and Zachary uh -huh. Quinto. Walking out of it and you being like, I'm so mad at you. I was like, why? It's like, because <laughs> I'm, I'm into Star Trek now. And that's nerdy. <laughs> I don't want to be a nerd. Yeah, Star Trek is, Star Trek right. is objectively nerdy. Okay. I thought you were going to say stuff like better than Star Wars or something. Oh, thinking, absolutely. What are you talking about? No. Now, so. that's that's a franchise I was into before. Yeah. We were hardcore Star Wars fans yeah. in my house. So I was nerdy about Star Wars and Harry Potter, of course. But that was really it. Yeah. The, the What's the one franchise you just simply cannot get me into? Lord of the Rings. I won't do it. I just don't like it. I think it's so boring. I'm not interested in it whatsoever. It's so long. It's so arduous. Which is wild because, like, the books aren't even... Nearly as long as some of the books that you read now. Okay, but nothing like, happens in them. That's a lie. You just didn't get to the part where things happen. How many pages do you have to read before you get to the part where things happen? Because I read way too many pages of that. And I read way too many descriptions of leaves falling off of trees and smells in the air. And, yeah, it's, oh world, it's my called world God, building. I hate it. It's like the most overly descriptive flowery language I've ever read. And I think it's so incredibly boring. I just don't like it. I'm not into it. I don't get it. She wanted to watch the movies. Like. We tried to watch the movies and I fell asleep. Do you not remember that? That's what I'm saying is she won't watch the movies. <sighs> anyway. You got me into most nerd things. Most. Yep. Well, Scrimpy, I feel like that was a good test run. I feel yeah. like, I don't know if we should start a podcast or not. Maybe it's just a video of podcast and we occasionally do these kind yeah. of videos on just sit down um, and chat with microphones. Just because I like holding the microphone. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I think that wraps it up. Yeah. It's a nice little teaser. Nice little uh, preview. Let us know if you liked it down below. <laughs> preview of Eric and I just talking over each other the entire time. Probably me more than you. I have a bad habit of talking over you. But it's because I'm just such a good active listener. I can like finish your sentences or ask you questions, you know? Sure. Yeah. That's the sign of a good listener talking over the other person. Shut up. <laughs> Anyway, let us know down below if you like this and maybe we'll film some more. Who knows? Yep. Maybe we'll post it on a real podcast. Maybe we'll do like a real dedicated sit down and chat podcast that's like an hour long. People can just lazily listen to as they're on a long drive. They can listen to us fight. <laughs> Sounds like a nice relaxing experience. For <laughs> anyway, um, thank you guys so much for watching. Don't forget to smash it <laughs> and uh, like the video. We will... Oh, and don't forget to subscribe. Oh, I guess that's what smash it means. Yeah, smash it. I just am prolonging this so I don't have to be done holding this microphone. Thank you all so much for watching. Thanks for and coming, we'll everyone. See you next time. I'm about to go cut Eric's hair, so definitely stay tuned Bye. and subscribe for that. Bye!